How's it going everyone? JakeXVX here, back on Forza Horizon 4 once again. Got a little experimental type video today, all based around something called Rolling Launch. Many of you will know, I'm going to show you on screen now, that in-game there is something, there is an actual feature for launch control, where you can launch from a standstill and choose which RPM to launch at, which is really cool. Let me show you here, if I hold the handbrake, hold the accelerator, hold the clutch, I can launch from whatever RPM I want with full boost, which is very cool. But there's lots and lots of other things like this in real life. Real life cars could have launch control, anti-lag, rolling launch, rolling boost. And we've not got many of those in the game. However, there is actually sort of a way to do rolling launch or rolling boost in the game. Let me just very quickly explain to you what that is. Rolling launch allows you to set off from a standstill, so let's say 50 miles an hour. I can set off from here instantly with full boost. If we look at my boost right now, it's not full. When I mash the throttle, it takes a second for that boost to actually, you know, catch up. And by then I'm already kind of going, but the rolling launch and the rolling boost will allow us to stay at 50 miles an hour or 60 miles an hour, build up the boost and then shoot off the line. I'm just going to upgrade the new Mustang and show you the actual rolling boost in action and how you can possibly do it yourself. Now I'm still kind of learning it because obviously it's not really supposed to work, but it kind of does. I don't know if it's faster than just accelerating normally, but it is a load of fun. So let's get right into it. Right, I am on the highway ready to show you all this in action. Just so you all know, these are my difficulty settings. For anyone who can't get it to work, then this may be why. Just change your assists to similar to me. I don't think you need manual with clutch. I'm just going to go down to manual since that's a lot easier for most people. Now this car is especially tuned so that in first gear here, I can mash the brake and the throttle at the same time and it won't accelerate it won't break, it will just hold at that RPM. And while it's holding, the boost builds up to max, and then when I let go of the brake, it shoots off the line. Let me show you all. 50 miles an hour here. As you saw then, it held at 48, 49, 50 miles an hour. It did start accelerating a bit after that, because obviously it's not really supposed to work properly. But the boost was max. Let me do that again. It's pretty cool. Let me try releasing the brake now to launch off the line. Full boost. Oh, it is so awesome. You may notice when I accelerate like this from 50, there's a slight delay. You can hear the slight delay from 50 from when I mash the throttle, and that's the boost spooling up. Now this rolling boost only works in first gear, if I put it in second gear, it loses speed, which is obviously not good. Now, I've only found a very, very few amount of cars that this actually works with. Now you want the car to be rear wheel drive because how it works is obviously the brakes lock up all four wheels but because there's so much power going through the rear wheels they stay moving. I'm not sure if you noticed but when you hold the brake and the throttle the front wheels actually lock up but the rear wheels are so powerful that's what keeps the car going. It's not how it works in real life, but that's the in-game equivalent. Let me just try and find another car that this will work with, and we'll build the car from the ground up so all of you can build a car yourself that works nicely with this rolling boost little thing. Do you know, I'm quite interested to try the Koenigsegg 1 to 1. Now with some cars this obviously just won't work, it won't work at all. With some cars like the Mustang, it will. There's a few important things which I've noticed you have to have on the car. I would highly recommend rear wheel drive, that seems to work best for me. So keep your car rear wheel drive, but you have to put drag tyres and then everything else just fully upgraded. You're going to want as much power as possible. This only really works with powerful cars, although it may work with slow cars as well. But mainly you just need a nice amount of power, fully upgraded drivetrain and everything so you can change the gearing. 
And then we'll go, we'll just take this out now. We won't touch the tune in just yet. But right, just from accelerating up there, I think it's going to work. But in first gear, rear wheel drive, it accelerates very nicely and no wheel spin. That's a good indicator that it's going to work. Okay, so we've seen that the Koenigsegg, which is the car I've chosen, grips well in rear wheel drive with drag tires. That's the first step. So now I want you to bring whatever car you've trying to make into a rolling boost car to the motorway. Then go into first gear and hold the brake and the throttle at the same time. Chances are it will accelerate. When you hold the brake and the throttle, it'll do one or the other. It'll accelerate or it'll brake. We want to get it to the point where it does nothing. It just balances. So let's say you hold them both and it accelerates like this does. What you need to do is you go to your tuning, go to your final drive and decrease it. If the car accelerates when you click both triggers down, decrease it. If the car starts to brake when you place both triggers down, increase it. In my case, I need to decrease it. Let me put it about there. Let's try it now. Oh, that's practically bang on. And then I let go and it goes straight off the line. So we've concluded that I've managed to get the Koenigsegg working and I found what I like to call the sweet spot. The sweet spot in the tuning is the point where it does the rolling boost. But unfortunately, as you can see, first gear isn't very big. As soon as I found the sweet spot on the Mustang, which I showed you before, it did like 130 miles an hour in first gear, so it was worth it. But once we found the sweet spot in the Koenigsegg, the, the gear's not big enough to make it worth doing the rolling boost. So I'm going to jump in another car now. We're going to jump in the McLaren F1 GT. As you saw with the Koenigsegg, the first gear was too short. That means that the car just isn't powerful enough. If that happens, you need to find a more powerful car. Okay, we've noticed the grip is working well for the McLaren. Let's go to the motorway and set up this sweet spot. Okay, here we go. Let's mash the brake and the throttle. Okay, it's accelerating. That means we need to go to the tuning and decrease the final drive. Let's pop it about there. And let's try it out. Here we go. It's still accelerating. Let's do it even more. I think that's it, here we go. I've decreased the final drive completely with this now. This is getting interesting. And now it's working, here we go. 50 miles an hour. Let go and boost, oh yes. So the McLaren F1 GT is a little bit better, as you can tell. The first gear is a lot bigger. Oh, it's so much fun. As I said, it's probably it might not be much faster than just accelerating off the line. I think it will be a little bit, but not that much. But either way, it is satisfying to hear and see the boost just kind of build up like this. So that's kind of the basics of how you'd get a car to set up with rolling boost to get that sweet spot in first gear to where it lets you hold them both at the same time. But you just have to hope that first gear is long enough for it to even be worth doing. Let me just jump back in the Mustang because that's what it worked best with. And as I said, the tune is actually shared for this online if you want to uh, have my Mustang tune. I'm just gonna set up the tuning on the Mustang one last time just so you can see it in action. So you can try and do this with your own car. Right, first gear on the Mustang. That accelerates way too much, which is why we can seriously decrease it. Um, oh, it's already at the minimum. Let's get the first gear all the way down there. Here we go. Let's try from here. Oh, it's actually de-accelerating a bit too much. De-accelerating means I need to make this just a bit that way. That should solve it, I think. Perfect. So that's the general basics of 
the, as close as you can get to rolling boost in Forza, to be honest. You can set up cars for it to work well, but only a certain amount of cars are even worth doing. The Mustang and the F1 GT seem to work pretty well. Feel free to go ahead and try as many cars as you can find. Bear in mind, I think the power to rate ratio has to be rather high. Please guys, go and find your own cars on Forza Horizon 4 with a high power to rate ratio, a lot of horsepower, and see if you can get it set up to work properly. It is a shame that rolling boost or rolling launch or whatever you want to call it isn't in the game, which is why I managed to find out that this Mustang sort of has something similar and it's pretty fun to play around with. So I thought, why not figure out how it's done and make a video on it? It's not working so well in the rain now, but oh well. The cars I've managed to play around with this in is the Mosler, the Mustang, the F1 GT. And it's up to you lot to find more cars that can do it. Leave a like if you've enjoyed everyone. Subscribe if you haven't already for more Forza Horizon 4 content. And I'll see you all later.